Good afternoon, and I am Louisa Lau, the Registrar of the Hong Kong Chartered Governance Institute. And welcome to all uh, students joining this uh, lunch gathering. Uh, the focus of this gathering is the experience sharing on the preparation of the CGQP examinations. And then we will also share some of the institute information to you. So welcome once again. Uh, before we start our uh, sharing, uh, let's look into what we are going to do in this hour during lunchtime. First of all, is that we will uh, look into the CGQP, of course, the Chartered Governance Qualified Program, which uh, most of you have to complete before you uh, become a member. And then we will look into some of the performance and candidates' feedback on the last examination diet. And most important of all, we'll have two guest speakers who are students with good performance in the last uh, examination diets, I would say, not just the November one, but also the previous one. And then uh, we'll have some tips in preparing exams and that uh, about the institute's uh, learning resource and support to you. And then we'll have a QA and a section. Okay, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll start with the uh, presentation. The first one is that uh, we have informed all our student graduates and members who we'll change our logo in uh, January and that uh, this logo have given us a good direction, so a very modernized one if, with the uh, name change, after the name change, the uh, Hong Kong Chartered Governance Institute. So this is our new logo, a very modernized one together with the international uh, uh, logo, the Chartered Governance uh, Institute. So uh, we have a number of new students, so I just very quickly walk through with you our international and the local bodies. So the International uh, uh, Institute is the Chartered Governance Institute. This formally is called the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, which we have the name changed in November 2019. So with this uh, profession under uh, this chartered body, it has over 130 years of history. With now we have nine divisions in different continents with more than 29,000 members in 80 countries and almost like 10,000 students in these nine divisions. So our qualification, it is an international qualification. We have a uh, presence in different jurisdictions. It is a professional qualification, chartered governance professionals. And one of the characteristics is portable. So this portability is that when you become a member of, uh, the, of, uh, uh, of us in Hong Kong, and then later, if you have to migrate to the UK or you move to Canada or you move to Sing uh, Singapore or Australia, these are quite popular places and that your uh, registration can be transferred to these divisions and then they will take care of you after you have uh, formally transferred to them. So amongst the nine divisions is that uh, we originate from the UK and then it has uh, among like the Commonwealth countries in Canada, Zimbabwe, Southern Africa, composing of a few Southern Africa countries, and then New Zealand, Australia, Malaysia, Singapore, and we are the China, Hong Kong division of this CGI. So nine divisions over 80 jurisdiction. And, but, and that in China itself, that is, we have more than 6,600 members and graduates, almost like 3,000 students. So we are a growing institute. And coming to the HK uh, CGI, this uh, Hong Kong uh, body, that we first started in 1949, which formerly is uh, some members uh, of the uh, ICSA stay in Hong Kong and then uh, slowly, we grow in 1994 because we want to ensure the change of the sovereignty by that time. And then we set up this local body. And by that, in 1994, we already have 3,000 members. And then we change names to fit in 
we are evolving to fit in the strategic uh, uh, development of the international body as well as for ourselves. And we changed the name, uh, the HK uh, ICS as well, the Hong Kong Institute of Childhood Secretaries. So we use Childhood Secretaries as the professional qualification as the uh, name. And then following with the international body change of name and then other divisions, they also changed their name including us. And then on 20th July 2021, we have this new name, the Hong Kong Chartered Governance Institute, HKCGI. So that is what we are today. And then with this new logo, we also have revamped our new website. And then I hope that most of you have already uh, visited our website, like you enroll for your studentship or you uh, enroll for your examinations. So. Uh, we have uh, new faces and then the uh, site is more user-friendly and providing good information for you as a student, as a member. And in particular, is the professional updates like the thought leadership resources and that news and uh, events. So all these that we encourage you to, uh, from time to time, have a check out on this and so that you can find more from the Institute. And after the change of names of the international body as well as HKICS, both of us award two destinations, that is two qualifications, the Charter Secretary and the Charter Governance Professional. So as when once you complete your examinations and that you have gained uh, enough uh, working experience and that you have uh, declare you are fit and proper person, then you can become a member of the institute and you can use, say, tell your uh, business associates, your companies, you are a charter secretary and, uh, and charter governance professionals. And our post nominals is FCG for the international body, HKFCG for the Hong Kong body. And then you can put CS as the charter secretary and CGP as Chartered Governance Professionals as your uh, destinatory uh, letters. So uh, associates the same ACG or the HKACG. If you have in future very soon, you complete your examinations and then become, you will become a graduate and then you can say you are a grad CG. So with all these uh, over the years in Hong Kong with our professional stages and that we have recognitions from the most important, of course, is the Hong Kong Exchanges and Caring Limited. So as a company secretary of a listed company, you need to be have a, a professional qualifications. The first is the members of the HKCGI or then the lawyers or the accountants. And then the company's registries, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, as well as the Security and Futures Commissions that if you need to uh, certify certain uh, documents uh, for your companies come on companies matters or uh, the, like opening of bank accounts or they're filing into the company's registry. So we are the uh, suitable uh, certifier for documents for these purposes. And our members are also recognized to uh, handle certain of the preliminary uh, bankruptcy uh, investigation cases. And also we are, have the right to uh, instruct a barrister to write some opinions or advice on companies matters. So we have the direct access to the bar. So these are all the professional uh, recognitions uh, of our memberships. And to wrap up that we are an international uh, body, we are a of professional qualifications and that our uh, membership is portable for the uh, CGI, for our international body. So coming to our Charter Governance Qualifying Program, we call the CGQP. This program is effective. Just We have just uh, uh, launched it for two years and then it composed of two parts. Part one is with a very good foundation on interpreting 
financial and accounting information. And then the company, Hong Kong Company Law, Corporate Secretaryship and Compliance and Corporate Govern Governance form the very basic foundation of the knowledge part of our profession. And then we uh, move on for the part two is the strategic management and risk management. This is a new top, uh, new subject. And also the boardroom dynamics and the Hong Kong taxations. These two subjects are electives, so you can choose either one of them. And for all these that with all these uh, subject matters and the knowledge that it can build up uh, as a good knowledge uh, required by a charter secretaries and a chartered governance professionals. So we have a, a, some special features. So it's launched on 1st January 2020. This is a professional qualification examination and that complete at the master's level of examination. So uh, that, that tells you something that it has certain requirements and standard. And our examinations and the whole program have put the emphasis in the practical uh, compliance and, and risk focus. And all the examinations are with the actual score, pass rate at 50 marks. So we don't have uh, uh, to have this uh, line curve or standard deviations to set how many will pass. Is this what you have earned in your exams? And in our part two papers, the strategic management boardroom dynamics, as well as the risk management. These three modules papers is a case study approach. In particular, we will send you the case six weeks before the date of the, or the week of the examination. So you have sufficient time to, uh, to look into the case and try to understand what are the problems or issues or what are the, the, the characters or those uh, people named in those cases have done something wrong or not good enough and that you have to help them to address. And we, as I've already mentioned that the syllabus of the CGQP, we have uh, new modules like the risk management and boardroom dynamics. And these are built and based on the uh, CS, uh, the company law and the uh, corporate governance. And all these will better reflect the knowledge and skill set required for governance professionals. So we, this is an internationally recognized program. And the examination is adopted by five CGI divisions, including uh, the uh, UK, the Canada, Singapore, Malaysia, as well as uh, Hong Kong. So also the uh, students in China, you sit for the same examinations like the other parts of the world, but we do adaptation. That is, we apply the local law uh, rules and regulations. And that, so this features in the international perspective with local needs, that is the local adaptation. And after completing this qualifying program, it will lead you to the membership with due qualification, as I've mentioned, that is, the Charter Secretary and the Charter Governance Professionals. So uh, about the, uh, we have some feedbacks on the candidates and then I can just show you that we have, this is the last three dias examinations uh, performance. And that you can see that the first three papers, this has some ups and downs. The IFAI is doing tremendously well. And then the boardroom dynamics, the risk management and strategic management, these three modules, you can see that they are moving, the passing rate is moving upwards. And Hong Kong taxation is always maintained in this 45 to 50% levels. And this is because this subject has been uh, examined for the last uh, uh, two decades. But of course, it's set in different uh, levels. Now is in the master levels examinations. And in particular, the risk management, the performance is climbing up. So with all these that we try to look into, uh, what makes the differences of the performance? Because we just 
release the November exams. We haven't had time to complete this, uh, the pass rate comparison with the job activities and the academic performance. We largely see that if you are working in relevant areas like those we did uh, practical experience, like the boardroom dynamics, the uh, corporate secretaryship, uh, the taxation, or that they will have a better performance if you are, they are our candidates is, are working as CS, compliance, and CG areas. And whereas for the academic qualifications, that we still see the CG, CS, and the company, uh, Hong Kong company law have uh, good uh, relevance. But it doesn't mean that if you are a non-relevant degree, you haven't studied it, you don't do good. They are also very good in this area. And that uh, for the uh, strategic management, we see that and all these four papers, the non-relevant students are doing quite well. And that uh, whereas the risk management, the accounting and finance students have certain benefits. But I can tell you that our risk management is not focusing on the financial management. It's encompassing the, the whole of the company's uh, concern. So and we also have some uh, study pass rates, which you, you have uh, some prior studies. Uh, or the support for the institute in general, the performance uh, of the examinations is better. So this is the same like the ballroom dynamics or uh, that uh, the, uh, uh, the risk management. So we also have some other uh, uh, survey after the examinations that the students give us their feedback. And then we can come back to these uh, later when we have more time. So I would like to, at this point of time, I would like to introduce our speakers for the sharing sections. So uh, the first speaker is uh, Flora. Flora has just become our graduate. She completed the whole of the CGQP in the November diet, and she is performing. She has been doing very well with merit certificates in the uh, Hong Kong Company Law, interpreting financial and accounting information in the CGQP, as well as Hong Kong financial accounting in the former IQS examinations. And then the second one is Timothy. Timothy Chow, and that he got the module prize award for the IFAI in June 2021 examinations, uh, which was his first examination. And then in the second examination, he also had the corporate secretary and compliance uh, award. So uh, now, uh, may I now uh, welcome Timothy and Flora. So Flora, please. Okay, uh, welcome to both of you. Indeed, we should have a third uh, speaker we, as we promote, uh, Yuki, Yuki Hui. But unfortunately, she's sick and cannot join us, so we, can, we have uh, two speakers in, uh, for this session. So uh, be, uh, without further ado, maybe that uh, let our uh, speakers uh, uh, introduce themselves first. So, Flora, can I in invite you to in introduce yourself? Uh, hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, sh should I be speaking in English? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We have okay. uh, some some uh, students from the mainnet, and later we will put on to the uh, YouTube so that uh, our mainnet students can also share. Okay. Uh, Thank so you. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Flora, and I uh, maybe a brief uh, background about myself. I graduated from the uh, University of Hong Kong and I uh, studied um, a bachelor in arts. So I took uh, comparative lit literature and English studies. So I didn't really have any background on uh, corporate governance or accounting law, but um, well, I, I took it anyway. And well, now I'm working in a listed company as company secretary. 
uh, working in the secretariat department. So uh, it's very closely related to what we studied and what we took during the exams. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And how about you, Timothy? Um, hello, everybody. I am Timothy Chow, and I'm currently a student in the Institute. As Luisa has just introduced, um, I've taken the IFAI, the Interpreting Financial and Accounting Information earlier, and uh, in the most recent diet, that is uh, November 20, uh, 2021, I took the Corporate Secretaryship and Compliance Examination. So um, in terms of my work, I'm actually a solicitor working in a local law firm in Hong Kong, and my principal practicing area is actually litigation. But I also have the opportunities in dealing with various cases concerning uh, mergers and acquisition where the secretarial matters come into play. And it is also this which triggers um, me to realize the importance of secretarial matters. And that is the reason why I've enrolled as a student in the uh, Institute. Okay, thank you, uh, Timothy. So uh, you all have mentioned why you, uh, from as a solicitor, you have to take these uh, examinations uh, to enrich your knowledge and then it will support your work. And how about you, Flora? What makes you to, 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 to take the uh, examinations and want to become a Charter Secretary and a governance professional with your background as a non, uh, most like a, as a language uh, uh, graduate? Yeah, uh, I, uh, I was working part-time in uh, the same listed company that I'm now working in. And uh, since uh, a year one of my university days, so uh, it just uh, my interest in this field just slowly grew because uh, initially I don't really know, didn't really know what this field is. But uh, the more I, uh, the more that I work, the more that I get in touch with, I realized that this, uh, this field is really professional. And uh, it's not as easy as uh, most people think. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not easy because it's uh, at the master levels. And that we also noted that the syllabus of each model is real long. We, uh, <laughs> we, we uh, anticipate because we said that when you work as a professional, that uh, your, uh, those people working with you, your uh, supervisor, your boss, or your director would not be limit to ask you questions. Yes. So you have to prepare your answers and then you always have to be uh, learning, uh, lifelong learning. So with this, uh, I would, I, I would, um, you, I admired both of you with very good results. It must be a very diligent uh, students and then you have good methods and certain tips that you can share uh, with our participants today that what, what have, what makes you can have achieved these uh, good results? It's not easy to pass, first of all, and then you've got the some got the uh, module prize and and got the Marissa's uh, certificates award. So, uh, how about you, Timothy? And that uh, with your uh, two uh, two in a row with good results. So, can you share how you prepare when you first start join as a student? And when you look into the examinations, how you prepare for, for these examinations? Well, I think the most important point is to start the preparation early. So uh, for me, I use actually around one year to prepare each module. Uh, when I was uh, starting the uh, study, usually I started with uh, reading the study materials first. So these study materials are very important. And um, I can say that the question setters actually base their questions on the uh, study materials. So basically, uh, if you are very familiar with the studying materials, I think it is uh, it will be secured for you to get a pass. And apart from reading the study materials, I will also make a set of notes for myself. Um, as Luisa has said, the uh, syllabus is very broad. And so it is quite important to make a, a sort of a very condensed notes for myself to study. And um, I will usually use most of my free time 
when I'm not working to study the notes. I think there is no shortcut to pass the examination and hard working and perseverance are the most important elements to secure a pass. So during the weekend, during uh, when I'm taking the MTR off and on to work, I will also uh, take out my notes and study. So these are how I uh, eventually were able to secure the two uh, subject prizes for the two subjects. Yeah, so uh, a very diligent and hardworking uh, student. And, uh, Thank so you. We, Thank you. we don't envy you for the good results. It's all pay, pay up with the hard work. So Flora, how about you? Because I think it's also posed to some difficulties as uh, uh, a language student and that you have to study. I see that you have to uh, complete like the IFAI, uh, which this module is uh, composing of the accounting and the uh, financial elements. So, uh, so how you overcome with this uh, subject? Uh, yeah, as I said, because I didn't really have any experience in financial accounting or any financial knowledge at all. So uh, I think it, it really did help when I took the uh, Hong Kong Youth Space course for the uh, IF, uh, interpreting financial information, that subject. Because, um, well, first of all, as someone taught me all that I should know to prepare for the exams, but also I, I agree a lot with what Timothy said. So perseverance and dedication. You, you cannot skip the effort. You just have to work hard through it. And yeah, and I, I, because I'm working in the listed company now and uh, uh, it's all really well-rounded, so I have to get hands on on a lot of stuff. So that helps as well. I think working experience is one of the other important elements that helps you to pass the exam or at least have a brief knowledge of what is going on. Okay, uh, so uh, with, uh, I'll come back to Timothy and that, uh, you, as you said, you are a solicitor, but you do not know much about corporate secretaryship. Because this time we have quite a good numbers of our participants. We'll take this uh, CSC's paper in June. And that is very long. <laughs> and that uh, <laughs> is have encompassing a lot of things, including uh, just, uh, 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 I would say, a life cycle of a private company, also the listing uh, uh, companies' uh, requirements. So how you overcome this? And the, how, you, how, how you set the plan to study? Or any tips that you can share with, with us? Um, I think the syllabus, of course, is really wide. And the uh, method to try to understand the uh, or have a, an easy approach towards various topic is to try to analyze from the big picture about what exactly you are studying. As Luisa has just said, um, the whole syllabus is based on the cycle of a company. So uh, you may be able to approach which particular point of that chapter you are actually in within the company cycle. And that will be able to uh, enable you to easier to comprehend exactly what you are studying. But when it comes to the uh, uh, black letter law, I think there is really no shortcuts that you have to memorize a lot. Uh, CSC is a paper that really uh, requires you to give very concise answers. And some of these answers will not be able to be comprehended. So for example, the deadline for filing uh, different documents and papers, sometimes it will be seven days, sometimes it will be 14, sometimes it will be 28. And uh, that is really black letter law. And there is no uh, particular way for you to memorize. You just have to, um, really memorized by heart. And uh, maybe an easier way to um, prepare yourself for the examination is to enroll for the Hong Kong New Space preparatory course. I think that course is very important and useful because the instructor will uh, help you uh, compile the past paper examination questions by topic. And that is very important because of the breadth and the depth of the syllabus. It is very important for you to keep training on uh, different question types so that you are able to sort of develop uh, an answering framework for each particular topic. So uh, you will notice that when it comes to the examination, uh, 
a particular topic has a particular answering structure, once you are able to memorize and recall that particular answering structure during the examination, you will get a pass. But uh, because of the huge number of topics, if you try to compile the past paper questions by yourself, that will be very, very time consuming. And it is not very common for the questions to uh, repeat for this paper. So usually I think it takes around four to five years for one particular topic to be repeated in a particular diet. So if you enroll for the Hong Kong New Space Preparatory course, the instructor will help you to compile uh, all these past papers by topic and that will make your revision much easier. Yeah, so uh, that you will suggest them to take some courses in particular where, where that uh, they have uh, the, the, the breadth and depth of the syllabus. So uh, because you are a lawyer, you have good uh, company law background, and then it's easier for you to pick up those uh, issues. So how about you, Flora? You have to take the Hong Kong company law and as a non-law student. So mm. how, how you study this, this company law? Because I think company law poses a uh, uh, a, a big questions to most of our students. Yes. Uh, I think uh, one of the most important uh, uh, part when you're studying for the company law is that you re you have to be very clear about the concepts. So you you can't just uh, blindly memorize the uh, the answers from past papers. You really do have to make sure you understand uh, what the concepts are about. So uh, especially when I was doing the papers, I will always. Uh, when I come across some keywords, I will always circle them or highlight them. So I roughly know what the question is asking. So that guarantees you to uh, answer some key points so you won't miss anything. So, uh, so so that you can pass easier. But I think the most important thing is to memorize case, uh, case laws as well as the ordinance. So you can't just um, uh, call everything that you remember. You have to know how to put it in practice. So how does that case law apply to what the question is asking? Or how does that ordinance, uh, that section applies to the question? So you can't just blindly remember everything and then call everything. You have to um, put yourself into the scenario and try to solve that question, uh, try to solve the, uh, the problem as it is. Okay, thank you. So you you get all the tricks in preparing <laughs> the company the, the law papers. So Timothy, how 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 you you think what uh, Flora's uh, mentioned? Because you have all these uh, law backgrounds, law study backgrounds, and that any supplements you would like to suggest to our students? Because the company's ordinance is real, a real thing, very very long, a lot of information. Yeah, so um, I agree with Flora's point of view that application is actually the most important when it comes to your company law exam. Um, I think it is important to, of course, know the principles from the case law, but it may not be that important for you to repeat the particular facts of the case that you have studied. Uh, once you have cited the legal principle, you just need to add a bracket and then uh, cite the case name. That is how uh, I did when I was doing my law exam in law school. So we just cite a legal principle, give the case authority by giving a bracket, and then immediately you should proceed to the application part. So you should state um, in this scenario, I can observe this and how I will apply the legal principle into this scenario and uh, finally reach my conclusion. I think the application part is more important rather than uh, regurgitating uh, the case law or case facts. Yeah, okay, so uh, with these, uh... You have the study tips, that is how you do your preparation to uh, take the uh, knowledge part. And then when you prepare for your examinations, that is sitting at the examination center, how to answer the questions. So I would like come to come, come to another uh, question is that, so how you plan for your answer? I know, Timothy, you have a year for one subject. To prepare, you 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 use yeah. one year to prepare the subject. You will go for the like uh, the IFA. You go for the study, 
uh, the CSC, you study the, with the uh, Hong Kong Youth Space uh, program. And then what time you st study? Is that when you sit for the June examinations? So when you study those programs? You study start in March or even earlier? Oh, um, I usually took those uh, 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 preparatory course immediately before my examination. So uh, I think that will be helpful to me because I can keep my memory fresh by uh, remembering what the instructors say. And then I'll just go into the examination center. But um, I also understand that uh, some candidates may choose not to do that. And the reason is because uh, usually the uh, preparatory course will end only around one to two weeks before the examination takes place. So for those students who would like to, uh, or who expect that the um, instructors will be able to give a very uh, detailed explanation to you before uh, you go into the examination, I'm afraid that may not uh, meet your expectation, especially for the paper of CSC, because uh, the CSC has around, uh, I think it's 21 uh, uh, units for the whole paper, but we only have around 12 to 13 classes. So it means that eventually the instructor will be quite rushed in finishing off the whole syllabus. So if you want to uh, have more time to revise after you have taken the Hong Kong New Space course, then you may not be able to immediately take the examination right after uh, the uh, Hong Kong New Space course. Okay, so uh, that is uh, something quite different from what we learned from other students because most of the students, when they try to uh, prepare uh, to, to enroll for the examinations, usually in June, then they try to study in March. But that is everything very fresh without good backgrounds. So just for three months, that is not enough when you try to learn new syllabus, new subject matters, and then to go in depth for good understanding for your practical applications in the examinations. So either I would suggest uh, that either like Timothy, you do your own study first. That is, you take that as a revision program rather than a learning program. If you take that as a learning program, you should take say, three months earlier because we have the March, June, and September uh, in text. So then you can prepare for at least uh, like uh, our other speaker, Yuki, she particularly mentioned when we have some prior discussion is that she took two months because you have some prior learning as a CPA. And so that is taken as a revision. But she said that even as a revision for two months is too short. For her. Sometimes it's short for her. It should, it's a revision, it takes three months. As a new module study, at least six months. So uh, I think this is the timing we have to remind our students because each of the subjects, we advise them to use 200 hours as a totally new subject. I never studied the subject matter before. Do you agree with this, Flora? Yeah, I do. Because uh, for me, a lot of the subjects are very new to me. So yes. I would take at least uh, one to two months to go over the entire syllabus as uh, it, it doesn't, uh, it takes around two months to understand everything and then around one month's time to uh, practice on the past papers. So I would suggest uh, at least three months. The earlier you start, of course, is better so that yeah. you have more time to prepare yourself. Yeah, but then if you do not have the uh, time to study for at least uh, three months, I wouldn't suggest taking the exam that diet but perhaps to get another diet yeah so these both of you should be a very self-disciplined person timothy you study at, at, at most of your free time even on the on the mtr when you go to work or after work uh, or in the morning and then flora you work in a listed uh, company environment is always very very busy so how <laughs> you stretch your time <laughs> But I actually, I make a very short, uh, a brief uh, study plan for myself. So I will roughly know uh, it will take me uh, perhaps uh, two months uh, if the exam is on June. So I will start looking at the uh, syllabus in February to see uh, how long the syllabus is and what, uh, what topics are covered. So uh, then I will know around uh, perhaps in uh, April, I should be able to finish half of the syllabus. 
And after that, I will take, I uh, will see if I do not have enough time to finish the entire syllabus. I will start working on the past paper anyway, because uh, you can always learn from the past papers. So um, even if topics that you are not familiar with or concepts that you are not clear with, but uh, by practicing on the past papers, you can always uh, get something out of it. So that that is what I did. I will do a very brief uh, study plan, but. Uh, I think uh, ultimately you still have to put enough effort before you take the exams. I think that cannot be excluded. Yeah, so I see that uh, from your experience uh, with the learning, as I see that these uh, uh, examinations like the company law, uh, uh, CSC papers do help your work as well, right? Or that yes. your work also help your study. Yes, 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 yes. But for so those, if you do not have experience uh, uh, at your work or if you're still uh, do not really have hands-on experience, I still think you should start earlier. Yeah. And so uh, with this, I think is uh, two last questions that we have to share. At the examination center, time is very important. So during at the examination center, how you plan, we also always have to do plans, plan for your study, plan for your uh, revision, and then how to plan for your Ex uh, writing the answers during the examinations because we have some papers have part one, uh, part A, part B, some people, some papers like the IFA, I also ha have three parts. So how you spend your time to make sure that you get the, the marks? Um, for me, I will, uh, you have 15 uh, minutes reading time. So during that time, I will run through all the questions to, you know, spot out the key points. And I think it's also very important to look at the marks for each question. So if you look at, uh, especially for the new syllabus and uh, part A, uh, all the five questions are five marks and you have to uh, answer all of them. But normally the extent is, uh, is quite broad. So you might not know every single one of the questions. So I might skip that in uh, in my, when we can first, uh, you know, start to answer the questions. I will skip uh, questions that I don't know. And, uh, you know, put my effort to uh, other questions that I, I, I'm quite sure and I know what to answer. So I will go back to those questions when I have the extra time. So you have to calculate the marks and yes. then it proportionate with the time you have to spend yes. on the questions. And Timothy, I heard when we discussed, I heard that you have one experience that you definitely need to share with our audience is <laughs> after choosing the questions, if something gets wrong, what, what to do? And then will you share this with us? Sure. So that is the uh, experience when I was taking the IFAI examination. So um, the IFAI examination also consists of two parts. The first one is about short questions. And then we have, I think it should be four long questions out of which we have to answer three. And uh, so uh, my awful experience took place when I was answering one of the elective long questions. So uh, that particular question involves um, calculating some ratio. And it asked me to compare the two uh, ratios in two years. And then one of the uh, ratio for one particular year has been provided by the question. And so my job is to try to calculate the uh, ratio for the other year. But then once I've spent around, uh, I think it's around 20 minutes, um, I realized that there has, uh, I must have answered that question wrongly, meaning that the uh, ratio is so strange that it does not make sense. So at that point, I was really caught in a dilemma because uh, I know that if I continue to answer this question, very likely I will get a very low mark. Probably I will fail because uh, the calculation of the ratio is only part A. And then I have to make some discussion on that ratio in part B. So it means that if I get a wrong answer in part A, probably I will also answer everything wrong in part B. But then if I choose to answer another new elective question, then it means that I would have lost at least half of the time that it should have been allocated because I've spent around 20 minutes in the uh, question that I've come across a problem. So at that point, I think it's very important for you to really uh, maintain a very positive mentality and stay calm. Um, after 
assessing the risk and opportunities, I uh, finally decided to give up the whole question that I'm not confident uh, not confident with. So I chose to answer another brand new uh, elective question, which actually I also don't have much confidence to answer. But it eventually proved to be a, a correct decision because I'm able to attain a good result at the end. So I think this experience is um, is quite important for all of you uh, when you are caught in a dilemma or when you are facing grave difficulty answering the questions, just do not give up and try your best to answer. Uh, I think the question set has actually allowed room for candidates to make mistakes. And uh, maybe my experience is a proof of that. So yeah, that's my experience with the quite an yeah. awful experience, but it's yeah. also very precious. <laughs> yeah, this is experience I think is that when uh, the candidates look into the questions, make use of your reading time and read the, uh, the facts of the question and the questions itself, what the question is asking for. So make sure when you start, uh, you can write at the examination time, uh, highlight or circle those keywords. So make sure that you will not be divert. And because sometimes when we are at the examination centers, we get nervous we will start to write what we know, but not to answer the questions. So that is the most frequently happened when we uh, receive the examiner's comment. And uh, I would like to thank Thora and Timothy and that your sharing is very uh, useful and then insightful to us in preparing the examinations. And then Flora, uh, congratulate, you become a graduate and very soon you will become our members and that uh, you will have the destination as a charter secretary as a, and a uh, charter governance professional. And Timothy, I hope that you also will continue with, your, uh, with all your efforts with good results and very soon you will become our members as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, both of you. So, okay. And then I'll go for the next session. Uh, because uh, time is running out, I would just like to remind our students of uh, certain things. First is that please make sure that always check your HKCGI login account for institute updates because all the information will sent to your uh, uh, HKCGI uh, login account. So uh, you can also, because it's been mentioning that we've been uh, using exam papers, mark schemes and examiner's reports, this helps you to prepare and do certain revision. They are all in the login area. But one thing I would like to remind you that when you read your past papers, exam papers, do not just memorize that. Try to understand how, why we need these as the answers, because sometimes when the questions twist, you can your when you recite just by memorizing and put everything you 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 read into that question, it cannot help you to good get a good result or even a pass rate. And then register with the WKHK Prime Law Online platform, and then try to use the features to help you to do the revision at a later time. So these are some of the. Uh, key days and that our examination closing date is on 28th March and that I can tell you that definitely that uh, uh, we will continue with this uh, June examination even in view of this uh, difficult times in the city of this uh, COVID uh, pandemic. We've been uh, liaising with the exam, uh, the HKEAA who is uh, holding the uh, invigilation invig invigilation services for us and then we will try to put up more uh, stringent uh, precautionary measures not just by uh, by doing a declaration of your uh, health uh, like the temperature and then you may have to do a test uh, uh, make sure that you're negative before you can enter into the center and then we will inform you at a nearer date and so uh, the closing dates for the Examination diet enrollment is on the 31st March 
2022. About the examination technique workshops, I would like to remind you that it is good that if you have already uh, studied most of your uh, or have a good, uh, some basic knowledge uh, understanding of the subject matter, when you en uh, set, uh, enroll this uh, technique workshops, for the first two hours online, the uh, uh, tutors will cover the syllabus generally, and uh, maybe also he will cover some of the past papers to you. And then you can receive a mock paper. Then you try to do it yourself, uh, uh, like a two hours mock papers. And then the tutor will mark the paper for you and tell you how much you understand. And then at the uh, after marking all these, and then we'll have an hour, the tutor will talk about this paper, how to answer the questions. And then it gives you some uh, uh, insight uh, how to answer questions and how you yourself performs uh, in this mod and then so you can better prepare as the last uh, uh, revision. So for the others that all these days are also post in the website. So just check out if you have uh, enrolled those uh, uh, risk management, strategic management or the boardroom dynamics papers because you will expect to receive the pre-release case studies. So this is the timetable. If you have not yet made up your mind to enroll the uh, examinations, check with this timetable and that make sure that the days that you can uh, cope with uh, and that uh, you can uh, enroll to the examinations. As I've said, we will continue unless the pandemic uh, situation continues uh, as severe by mid-April, but uh, currently when we uh, in contact with the HKEA, it seems that yes, we will. Con uh, it's nothing. Uh, uh, it will not uh, stop for the time being, and that will uh, take up, step up uh, precautionary measures, as I've mentioned, and then we'll closely monitor the situation and update and communicate to you. So check in your login uh, account. Everything will be in your login account, and. These are the dates for the examination technique workshops. So check whether you can attend and then you can have time, two weeks to prepare the mock paper and then you can uh, go for the uh, examination, uh, examinations. So all these are the uh, uh, learning supports that we will give to you. Uh, we indeed, we did some research. Most people will think that, oh, whether I should read like the monthly journal, the CSJ, or the bulletin board updates, definitely on top, this past papers and suggest answers or the math scheme, it helps you to know the question, that single question itself. But the monthly journal, the, CS, the CGJ, or our research reports and guidance notes give you some forward looking uh, uh, insight into those uh, areas. And then if you do not have much prior experience or work experience in uh, subject matters like the CG or risk management, because sometimes it's touch on like these days, the ESG or the climate change, uh, we have guidance notes that will help you to look into what we call uh, like the format, what we need, what are the concerns that companies have to look into. These are good uh, samples for you to take. Uh, when you try to give answers, to give solutions to the questions. So the bulletin box updates are the updates of the rules and regulations that, that you can expect in the future. I would also like to remind you, if you have do not have a prior experience, we have a, a number of good CPD seminars. They are live coming forward or that they are online that you can subscribe or enroll at a student rate, uh, at a very low rate, so that you can take out that online study. And it helps you to understand the subject matter in one particular session uh, better. Uh, for example, we have a four hours uh, company law in a nutshell by uh, Dr. Uh, David Wu. And then he explains to you uh, uh, the company law, those uh, key persons or those uh, subject matters uh, in two sessions, two hours per, per video. 
And then we also have a sections on the uh, on the shares matters in company secretarial as uh, company secretaryship matters. So check out with all these uh, CGI CPD seminars, and then you may find something that catch your eyes that you need to know before or after the examinations or when you have, are working in this area. All this will help you when you are a student or when you are a member working in this particular field. So um, that's all my sharing with you today. And then uh, if you want to look into more, we also have the previous year's student gatherings that are posted on our website. You can have a check and look into it and that you can just go direct to the sharing skill given by the uh, other presenters, our students. So uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to send your emails to student at hkcgi.org.hk. We will reply to you. And that uh, thank you very much for staying with us uh, during this lunchtime. And that I hope all of you well and stay, keep safe and healthy during this pandemic. And that uh, good luck to you if you are going to take the examinations in June. So that's all for my our sharing today and good day to you. Bye bye.